Coming up on DTNS, spoiler, everything that will happen in 2021. This is the Daily Tech News Show for Thursday, December 31st, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. Somewhere in St. Louis, I'm Patrick Norton. From cold and snowy Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. From Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And the show's producer, Roger Chang. Man, it's like the Avengers <laughs> assembling to take on 2021. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for for doing this. Uh, thank you for committing in advance to coming back at the end of 2021 to check out how we did. Uh, it's always a good time. This is the last Daily Tech News show of 2020. So we can all say goodbye to 2020 at the end of this episode as well. Uh, let us start with Ms. Sarah Lane. Uh, tell us what is going to happen in technology in 2021. All right. So a lot of the stuff is stuff that I'm just hoping will happen, but I think I, you know, there might be some legs. We'll start with Oculus. Um, I am an Oculus Quest aficionado uh, at this point. Um, I love it, but I love certain things about it. And the Quest 2 was uh, the hardware that came out after I got my original Quest uh, earlier in 2020. I don't have that. I just have the original, so I don't totally know what I'm missing. As far as I hear, it's you know a little lighter, a uh, little bit more comfortable, a little bit snappier, but you're still using the same Oculus App Store. And when uh, whenever a friend of mine, and I'm always telling everybody, like, just get it, you're gonna love it, it's so great. Especially with the pandemic, a lot of people being home. I'm like, you move your couch out of the way, have some fun. It'll be great. But my stuff is always based on like movement apps. I love exercise apps. I mean, even Tetris, which you could, Tetris Effect, which you could play sitting down fine. I find it more fun to kind of be, you know, you, what, up and you can moving move around. Oh, well, cool. I mean, you, you don't really, you, you really don't. But I just, I get excited about, you know, clearing levels. And so I like to stand up. I just, I find it to be a very fun physical experience, but not everybody feels that way. For example, a friend of mine got an, uh, a quest Two recently, and it was partly because I couldn't stop talking about it. And he was like, yeah, I watched a movie. It was cool. It was like m watching a movie in the theater. And I was like, wow, I'd never even do that. I'm just all about the apps. So there's some sort of, where, where there's a tipping point that I feel like, there's got to be that killer app that it's not Beat Saber because that was sort of the the one that everybody was like, oh, you love it. It's so much fun. But again, physical, physical app. It's really an exercise app that's like fun, you know, set to music kind of thing. And I like Supernatural. I've talked about it ad nauseum. And then there are other apps that I'm not really into because it's a little bit more of that like gaming you you know you get cert, uh, far enough into a game and then you you know you dip out you, and then you get you back into it here what are you predicting <laughs> my my prediction i'm sorry i know i'm getting along with this uh, my prediction is there's going to be some sort of an app and i don't think it exists yet that people far and wide will say oh you're not a gamer you don't like exercise maybe you like both but you already have other ways to do it there's going to be something that gets people into VR more than ever. To I don't for know everybody, what that app kind of is. Mm -hmm. I don't. Killer. I don't know yet what it is, but it's going to be something that captures the hearts and minds of of folks who didn't really understand why VR would be fun for them. I'll get right on that. You're going to make it. Yeah, I'll get right yeah. on it. I'm, I'm, Please I'm make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's been that, the big so, kicker so, with VR since the beginning, though. What is the killer app? When will that killer app happen? You know, will it will it coincide with when they're smaller, lighter, cheaper? Like, that's the that's the great holy grail. I hope it's 2021 that happens because I think VR deserves a stage. But right now, that thing just doesn't exist. You know, in terms of that killer app that'll bridge right. the gap between nerds, gamers, and you know, otherwise exactly. enthusiasts. Exactly. It's kind of like what's the Twitter of VR or mm. or 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 equivalent? Something that people are you know, for the most part, everybody's involved in. So that's my first prediction. Right. I, Killer I hope app. it happens. We'll, we'll know it if we see it. I think it's it's I not a, so. a hard measurement, but I, I think we'll be able to evaluate this one. It's a good one. All right. So next one, we've talked a lot about social networks and what's good and what's bad about them. And when we say social networks, now there's TikTok and there's been Instagram for a while. But I, I always sort of think of it as like Facebook and Twitter. 
those are like the social networks that have been around for over 10 years, aren't going away anytime soon, but are rife with problems, which we talk about on DTNS all the time. There will be some sort of alternative social network. So it's social. It's meant to bring people together in some way, but it isn't LO. Remember LO a few years ago that mm-hmm, was going to be, mm-hmm. it was going to, you know, it was going to be the new Facebook, but, but not Facebook. And everyone was like, this is a great idea, but no one's really here. And so they'd all kind of went back to Facebook. Then there's parlor. Parlor is a, a great example of a social network that was like, we don't like, well, not we, but a lot of people who use Parler were like, we don't like the op- uh, options that we have thus far. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Somewhat thriving, certainly got a lot of engagement in 2020. But then you see, again, this trickle back to Twitter of, well, but that's where everybody else is. Not everyone's moving to the other network. So you can triumphantly go hang out somewhere, but it's all about the people that are around. I think that the social network as it stands, has to be reimagined, and we haven't seen that yet, and it might happen in 2021. So so not a new type of social network, which we've seen with Snapchat and TikTok, but you're saying there will be a new social network that will directly take from Facebook and Twitter, because TikTok and Snapchat really didn't take from Facebook and Twitter. Exactly. Makes, they're, yeah. they're different, and they're fun, and that's all great, but yeah, they, so, didn't, they didn't erode so the stalwarts. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 hear, so hear me out real quick. So hear me out real quick. There, there, there's Apple Plus. There's Apple Plus out there, right? The the Apple TV. There's there's a Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Google. Wait. Well, hold on. Just just bear with me here. What if Google put a plus at the end? <laughs> uh-huh. Just hear me well, out here. And, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah. You I, made there Rob might cringe. Be something I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this well, is. I, I cringe never because wanted. they probably will, and then they'll cancel it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah, sure I've ever Google wanted Plus. a prediction to come true more often than this, Sarah. This is like this is the thing I want the most right now. Maybe of all my tech life is a is that. I don't know how that works though, because at the end of the day, a, an open system is what people want, but open systems at scale tend to lead to bad actors, uh, you know, problems of scale, like all the mm-hmm. things we're dealing with with Facebook and Twitter now. So I, I don't know how they do it, but I want you to be right. Yeah, I know. I I want to be right as well, and I I don't totally see where this goes. Well, you're there predicting been... somebody will figure it out. That's what I like. I, yeah, yeah, and there have been so many think pieces, especially in the last six months, of of there's, there's a social network fatigue, but we can't quit them because you get your news there. It's where your friends are. You see photos, you see videos. There are all sorts of things that are good about it, but a lot of things that are bad. And so, yes, rise up new network. We're waiting for you. <laughs> all right. Real quickly. What's your, what's your hat trick prediction to bring in <laughs> three for three? Yeah. Well, so uh, we're all going to get super rich because Bitcoin is going to come back. I and mean, the reason that I said this, was, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, one thousand, which is the highest it's ever yeah, it's hit. Today, ever been, so, so yeah, know, this, which sort of there. S- <laughs> my prediction happened like a week ago when it wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but now I see that just just by thinking it into existence, we're on our way. So, so, but but yeah. you're saying it's going to stay there. It's not going to go. It's not going to plummet back down. Yeah, it's right. Back yeah. It, and the whole thing with Bitcoin is, you know, I I had put like a very small amount of money into somebody that was managing a fund years ago. And we, it was like, whoa, doubled my money in like a day. And then it was like, oh, now I'm back to like almost zero. And it's been at almost zero since then. <laughs> and I was kind of like, oh, that sucks. Uh, but that's what you get when you, you know, you kind of bank on something that uh, you don't necessarily understand super well enough to do it yourself. But I think we are getting to a point where crypto is no longer this kind of like weird n- nerdy niche thing that like people pay for like weird stuff on the dark net for. It is it's becoming more mainstream than ever. And I think that that's where it's gonna it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna rally in 2021 and stay there. All right. All right. I like it. Everybody Let's likes it. it. We're getting nods. Yeah. All right. Scott Johnson, what's your first of three? All right. This one feels like a bit of a low-hanging piece of fruit, but whatever. I got to try to win next year. So uh, here goes. Netflix will lose a massive share or start to bleed audience, 
and at a at a faster rate than anyone can expect. Their shareholders aren't going to be happy. It will be due mostly to Disney Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, others with really strong showings in the coming year, uh, especially Disney Plus. I feel like that, uh, even with their price hike to eight bucks in March, is still an incredible bargain. And if people are looking at the services, trying to decide which one or two they're going to hang on to, I feel like it's less and less likely to be uh, Netflix. I feel like right now, even though they have the most production happening behind the scenes, it's not the best production happening behind the scenes. It's a lot of noise, and it's hard to sift through in terms of original content. And I think this is going to hurt them in a short term at least, maybe longer, but it will force them to eventually either price drop after all these increases or to not ever raise prices again until the rest of the market reacts with their own price, uh, price raises that take it past the $20 mark. Right now, their high-end uh, four-screen option is $17.99. It's freaking ridiculous. It went up two bucks. It's a lot for what you get at Netflix. And Netflix is great, don't get me wrong, but it's starting to make everything else look really tempting. And I think that's only going to benefit these other services. So my prediction, my prediction in the TLDR is uh, Netflix is going to lose a bunch of ground. Everybody else is going to benefit from that. I concur. Yeah, I like yeah see? Agreement across the board. I can see it. I cut the cord this year. The reason was not because of a love of Netflix. It was because of a hate of how much I was paying cable. And if Netflix replaces cable, then they, they get on the same chopping block that cable was on. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of my take generally with, I mean, I've cut the, I cut the cord and I want to say 08, 07, some crazy time ago. Never looked back. I haven't paid for cable since, and it's all been streaming stuff. So for me, it's just gotten better and better, although more crowded and more crowded, which is a whole other issue and a different topping or topic to talk about at some point. But but I I really like the direction it's all gone. I just think Netflix has gotten really big for their own britches and have gotten to a place where now others can scooch in, do amazing original content, mostly on the backs of things like Disney's acquisition of Fox and therefore their stake in Hulu and all this other stuff makes them just a power player almost overnight, plus their own original programming. I just think it's going to get harder to compete with. Netflix can't sit in that, you know, that top spot for too long. Um, they, they, they feel like the Internet Explorer of browsers when it comes to movie streaming. Eventually, people are going to go, oh, there are other browsers and I like this one better and they're going to start using it. So that's that. Patrick, we can't hear you. We do. We want to hear you, but we can't hear you. Oh, I just got you. Don't you don't really watch any of the original series on Netflix? Then I do. Um, I feel like I've run out of them, though. So a couple will pop, and I'll say, "Oh, I haven't seen that yet," and then I'll kind of fall off of it because I didn't like it very much. And there, there are plenty of series for me to binge there that I've never quite gotten to. But as far as like original series goes, I've gotten most out of Netflix what I think I want. Um, and what they've announced for the coming year doesn't look anything near as as aggressive or ambitious as some of the other services, in particular Disney Plus. So I, again, that's yeah. primarily driving my prediction that they'll drop in market share. I'll be curious to see original. Is... Oop, go ahead. No, I was going to say original content is tough, you know, because you know, as as much as we say we want new stuff, we really don't want new stuff. We want comfort food. We want we want. We want the nostalgia, and, and, and so that's why we, we, we keep going back to it. So, yeah, I, I, I concur. Netflix is in, some, is in some trouble in the next couple of years. If they don't get them, they're losing all the, all the comfort food is going away. All the dessert is, is going away December 31st for, for, you know, for a lot of them. You're losing that's a good point. So, You're not going to be able to watch Friends there. You can't watch Seinfeld there. You can't watch these things that, that used show. to be just on in the, back, <laughs> on in the background. I don't like Friends either. Don't, I'm, See, I'm the exact same. opposite. Same. Same here. Same here. <laughs> hey, I watched food, like I five Friends Blu-ray. episodes last night. Just oh my because, gosh! Sarah's just because a real I was fan. like, which what year is this? Let's try to like pinpoint the nineties. You know. <laughs> yeah, I can proudly say I've never seen an episode of Friends, not one. <laughs> my man. And it's it's a my badge man. of honor, so I go out of my way. Keep I will it. make myself uncomfortable Keep to not see it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, Sarah will carry the torch from here on out as needed. Well, until the end of the year, and then I'm Patrick, scared. you're being too polite. I see you chomping at the bit to say something. Just say it. I'm just laughing because I've, I've seen 
one episode of Seinfeld. It was the same. Uh, twi- I've seen two episodes. I've seen the same episode of Seinfeld twice. It was the soup Nazi episode, and it still pisses me off because I used to get <laughs> soup at the place that the, was that inspired the soup Nazi. So I'm like, whatever. Um, but it's also, I mean, like, like for for me, Lamar, it's like I'm looking for a lot of original stuff. And I've, at one point, I was getting frustrated because obviously Netflix used to have all the movies and now all the movies are spread across Netflix and Amazon prime and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's like, I think, I think they're all in trouble because Netflix is spending an insane amount of money. Disney's going to try to spend an insane amount of money. HBO max, who finally got Roku today is looking around and going, <laughs> so we've have several subscribers and we need more. So that's going to be a really interesting, I think they're all going to be in trouble next year if they don't, get a lot of well going. uh i'm not going to use one of my predictions but i think you're all wrong <laughs> netflix oh. is going to be fine and all of these other services have lots of room to grow i i everybody nobody's gone broke underestimating netflix uh and they always prevail how, somehow so how much how much stock do you have no, I'm just, I, know I, have, I own zero I stock know. in netflix <laughs> i own a lot I'm, of stock in lamar though so maybe I, hey <laughs> hey we all hold important. a lot of stock in lamar <laughs> all right yes. we got two more predictions scott you got you don't have a lot of time left yeah i'll rip rip through these i'll rip through these uh nintendo will release a full generation sequel to the switch they'll probably call it the switch 2 but who knows it will have a couple of huge nintendo titles and be a monster hit oh wait you used you like a whole console gen you're brand new already yep yep, because we're like what 2016 was the last one i agree they have to Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. bold. They, they yeah. do half gen, and they also don't care like what Sony or Microsoft are doing. They're in their own niche, and they will be incredibly successful with it as long as they don't get too weird. Uh, so the you Wii to Wii like, U, like we went from the Wii U to the Switch, we're going to get the the successor to the Switch. I do, I do Not think like that, but I also think I also think right. this is a little more in line with Microsoft and Sony's plan, even more Microsoft than anybody. Which is these consoles are now designed to take the games you own and move them forward with whatever the hardware iterations are more like a PC environment in the past, the way we're used to playing PC games. And I think, I think Nintendo's going to want to do that. I think okay. they're going to want to say, Oh, your switch stuff, bring it forward. That didn't used to be the way that used to be very unusual for Nintendo. So I think that's kind of, so, so, so you don't see a switch pro you, you literally see a, it's not like a, the, the Xbox, I mean, or like the PS Pro, PS4 Pro. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a half step. I I don't think half steps are happening anymore. I think they they go full sequel. At least I kind of hope they do. So this is partly colored by my hope and not my actual. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, And then finally, another game related one. Game Pass will make, or sorry, take Microsoft to the top spot for this console generation, at least in the United States and Europe. I I, I doubt Japan ever gets truly penetrated by their their stuff, but... uh, that will be in terms of units sold, profitability overall. Sony will spend most of the year trying to figure out how to match the value and features of things like Game Pass, uh, Game Pass Ultimate, and and everything that's bringing people even now, uh, before cloud gaming is fully out of beta, before all that other stuff happens. I think Sony's got an uphill battle this console generation, and like tradition has it, this use that's what happens. Stuff changes hands, and the other guy starts to win. I think this is Microsoft's chance, and by the time we talk again, they will be the clear leader. All there right. You go. yes. Good. Yeah. Nods all around. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Low Patrick hanging Norton. fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be two Wait for three, hear mine. Scott. I have yeah. a feeling you'll be two for three. All right. Uh, Patrick, what do you, what do you got for us? Uh, so it's been interesting watching this latest generation of mobile processors on Apple and the outrageous ass-kipping epic performance they've delivered, even when emulating uh, you know non-native programs. Uh, so I'm saying uh, Lenovo, HP, or Dell, those are the top three PC manufacturers uh, by market share. They work with Microsoft to follow Apple's lead and start their own custom ARM CPUs to be more competitive. Um, I, I cannot imagine the amount of screaming that's been going on inside of Intel in the last few weeks, uh, but I don't see that screaming stopping anytime soon. Uh, but I'd be very curious to see if anybody else co- tries to do what Apple did and consolidate everything onto a single chip and go for a massive performance gain. So you're saying all so three too. of them will do it, or at least one of them will do it? At least one of them. Okay. Um, I think this is yeah. smart. This smart money's on this pick, and I think the part of the reason I like it is uh, I got, well, I got a chance to use a mini with a new architecture with a new chip in it, and I, I was blown away, like blown yeah. away. I want to try a mini so bad. It's a freaking yeah. mini. Like, yeah. it's not supposed yeah. to blow me away, and it blew me away. It played World of Warcraft, like full screen, beautiful resolution, all stuff up to max. That's not supposed to be possible on a Mac of any kind. Yeah. So yeah, and it's and they yeah. were their performance was always so like meh, 
you know, yeah. from generation to generation for so long. And now it's just whack. And everybody's looking around and going, oh, my God, look what it did. Look, how, I mean, like you just did. It's just it's it's kind of ridiculous. And I think mm-hmm. it, it's it's going to be a really interesting nail in uh, yeah. uh, the forehead rather than the coffin of Intel or maybe AMD. At this so, so, very, so Patrick, very Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. Do, uh, yeah. do any of these companies die because of this? No, I don't know that's an extra prediction. Prediction, but I'll just you know I'm looking at these names, you know Lenovo, HP, Dell, and I wonder, does anybody fold here because you know well, of the the kind of I don't say harm that's done to Intel. Intel can still you know be used yeah. by those companies, but you know Apple took Apple kind of you know struck a blow there. In they the did struck a blow, but Apple's still like seven percent. If you take if Apple's like seven percent of the overall personal computer market, great, I want to say true. Lenovo's yeah. twenty four, twenty five, HP's twenty three, twenty four. I think uh, Dell's like eighteen percent. Then there's just a whole umpteen million other people on that list. Uh, Apple's number four; they're the fourth largest. I think there's still such a barrier to entry for so many people going from Windows to Apple, unless a whole lot of people buy a whole lot of these 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 you know like next generation MacBook Air and people sit next to them in the coffee. Well, eventually, right when we can go to coffee shops and and stare at other people's computers. That's so another just, prediction. We'll be able to go yeah. to coffee shops. Okay, <laughs> wouldn't that on. be nice? Yeah. Remember having breakfast in a diner? <laughs> I do. <laughs> A I'm nice diner. greasy diner. Yeah. Do you, oh do you hey Patrick? Let me ask you this: Do you think Nintel turns around and does some ARM-based architecture chip as a result? Do you think that happens? Uh, my friend. Well, they tried to do this. Uh, first, they they had an ARM license, then they gave up on that, and then they realized that the largest area for growth in computer processor sales was mobile phones. So then they try to spin the x86 architecture to mobile phones, and you know there were at least two Chinese only mobile phones made with Intel mobile processors several years ago that no one I know in the real world ever actually touched. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do they want to? Absolutely. Can they at this point? I don't know. You know, there's the, the, I think 60 or 70% of Intel's business at this point, and I have not checked recently, is not based on the sale of processors. So they may not even care as much as they might have a few years ago. Mm. All right. Prediction number two. By some minor miracle, Starlink actually manages to blanket most of the United States with $99 a month unlimited internet, uh, which is going to be like 50 to 150 uh, megabits up and down, which will cause radical changes in data pricing by Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile, and also could potentially make some radical changes in where people are able to work from home, which won't be as big a deal, I think, by the end of 2021, but it's still going to be interesting. There's One of the things we, we noticed when we were traveling, we spent a lot of the last year traveling by RV when we left Cali and before we ended up in St. Louis. And there's a couple things uh, I noticed. Is one, there's a whole lot of fixed point uh, wireless in large parts of the country that are fairly empty that is of extremely good quality and extremely high speed um, that nobody knows about. Um, and two, that the biggest complaint we ran into with people who are full-time either mobile or working in rural areas is that there are just, if you aren't lucky enough to have one of those wireless uh, operators, fixed wireless operators, you have satellite internet, traditional satellite internet, which is a mess, um, or you have, you're using mobile if you can even get anything at all. And I think it'll be really interesting to see what Starlink does in terms of bringing mobile access to large parts of the country, or I should say bringing internet access to large parts of the country that have incredibly limited options. Like it was amazing, like how many places that were close to major cities in the U S that had like, you know, the big, the, the $89 a month plan was five megabit DSL. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh man. It might not even just be <laughs> wow. Starlink. I think, I think you're, yeah. you're right to, to call Starlink out by name because they're the most likely, right. but there's some other players in this too that, that might crop up as well and help with this. It would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if the prices we're talking about. All uh, right. Finally, my low hanging fruit 3000 series NVIDIA GPUs and AMD 5000 series CPUs won't be easy to buy at normal MSRP prices <laughs> until at least June. <laughs> <laughs> Softball. Yeah. That was very low hanging right there. That hey, you know, good. some days you just I, I, I apologize <laughs> for throwing myself a wiffle ball. It's a but... prediction. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with Perfectly that. reasonable prediction. Yeah. Like well, it. a friend of mine was like, I'm gonna build a really I'm finally gonna build that big gaming PC like in January, right after I'm like, No, you're not. <laughs> like, right. believe me, if they had those processors, they wouldn't be waiting until January. There's there's nothing, dude. He's like, you're, you're, you're I'm like, Yep, bet you. He's the like, only I don't yep, want to bet you have them. Yeah, the only companies who have them are the 
the pre built or, or the ones who make it yeah. for like origin. Like they have and them. they don't and they don't have much like in no, the prices. They don't have a lot. Yeah. You want a three thousand dollars GPU? You're spending over two thousand dollars right now to buy a full Zoot gaming PC. Uh, oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all of this has happened before. All of this will happen again. <laughs> it all feels so familiar. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Rob Dunwood. Let's move on to you. What are you gonna predict for twenty twenty one? Okay, so my first prediction is uh, boutique consulting or gig consulting is just going to absolutely skyrocket next year. Um, you know, I went with this just because, I mean, COVID has changed how people work. Um, you know, you've got, you know, really a bunch of things happening. A lot of people are not working, so they had to figure out side hustles. So they're trying to start their own businesses or just do what they can do, um, via the internet to get by. You've got a lot of people who are no longer going into the office. They have discovered that they like this and they're not going to want to go back. And they're going to be looking to do things, um, you know, with their skill set that, oh, maybe I can, you know, maybe I can, you know, do this marketing nomination for this company. Or maybe I can, uh, you know, I can edit a podcast for someone. You're going to see these little jobs. So when I say, you know, boutique consulting or gig, I'm not talking about the big staff augmentation type of uh, gig where someone comes in and they're embedded in a company for six months. I'm talking about to where you literally may work for someone for eight hours uh, to do a very specific job. And you're going to see just a lot of things on Fiverr, on Upwork, and on other sites like that to where people are, who are now working from home who want to remain working from home are going to start seeing what they can do with their skill set to uh, generate some additional income just because of how they may have been displaced earlier this year. You think you'll see a lot of tools crop up as well that will help support this? You mentioned a couple of services there, but like, you know, do you think that will coincide with this where it will be much easier for people to say, that is my gig specialty, and I will be available for six hours instead of whatever setup we have now to do all that. I think you're going to see that, and I think a big part of this is that a lot of people, the reason that they weren't working for themselves is just because you know they were, they were comfortable working for the organization that they were with. It wasn't like they needed to go out and do something else, but now that they're home – um, or now that they're out of work, they kind of, wait a minute, if I can do this working from the house for this company, I could just as easily do it working for the house for someone else. So you're going to, you know, I think that you're going to just see a lot of that. And because of all these little companies that are popping up, you know, for the, fo for the folks who do go back to work per se, they're not necessarily going to want to give up their side hustle. So where they had time to do things before because they were, you know, th they weren't in the office or they, you know, they're, they're, you know, they were furloughed or what have you. Well, I, I still want to keep this podcast going. So now I've got to find somebody to do the editing for it. I need mm -hmm. to find somebody to do the transcription work. So you're just going to see all these oh. micro gigs that are just going to pop up all over the place uh, next year. And there's a are bunch of be... services in place for that kind of thing, like Indeed and, you know, those kind of places out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Listen, you mentioned Fiverr. My first thought was like, oh, gig work for starvation wages. I mean, do you see this? These 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 micro gigs paying well? Or are they going to be kind of like? And maybe I've just been on the wrong parts of Fiverr, but I remember looking at somebody like, "Wow, seventeen minutes of voiceover for twelve dollars." That's um, so Fiverr <laughs> in a lot of ways gets a a, a bad rap um, okay. because you are you know it's a global market, so you're seeing a lot of people who are willing to do stuff from other places for a lot less. But generally, if you've got a good skill set, you know, you might start off on Fiverr just to get your name out there. But what you end up having is, that, well, yeah, you may have done a $50 gig just to get the gig, but that could very easily turn into a $500 gig, a $5,000 gig, or or even like a, you know, a contract where you're just giving someone so many hours per month. I've seen that happen. Um, I've done that myself. So I, I can definitely see, uh, you know, like I, said, I, I don't have a problem with Fiverr as, as much as a lot of other people do because additional things come from from it you know you've got to start somewhere copy that thanks all right prediction number two prediction number two is that uh and this uh sarah you kind of touched on this but uh i think you're going to see um you know let, let me go ahead and just read it here uh 2021 by the you know by the year uh 2021 we will see a copycat clubhouse social network um, you know, company come around. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the uh, social mm -hmm. network uh, clubhouse, mm -hmm. which is a really different, it's, it's really different. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's audio only. Um, there's a hundred million reasons why every developer is going to try to figure out, Hey, I can do that and I can do that better. So I think you're going to see a plethora of these voice only type um, social networks prop up next year. 
Well, and I think Twitter is one of the companies that has been actively working on something like that. Twitter has definitely added, uh, you know, their their voice tweets. Voice tweets. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, like, I'm looking, you know, I personally have not been able to get an invite to uh, Clubhouse yet, but I've, I've, you know, joined via watching someone else on their iPad. So wait, it you're is predicting really from outside the club? Is that what you're saying, Rob? That's right. I'm not <laughs> in the club yet. So anybody wants to give me an invite, send it my Rob's way. Rob's like, but, uh, there's going to be other ones I can go to. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's... There's a lot of room in this particular space, and I actually think that you're going to see someone like Facebook actually just straight up copy the idea. Um, but no. Facebook has shown over time. <laughs> yeah. really Facebook would never. That's not. So, first, they'll buy problem. it. They'll buy it, then they'll copy it and rebrand it. Yep. And first, then, they'll so eliminate it, the competition, they'll ruin it, and yeah, then they'll and then create a it. copy that's tighter integrated <laughs> into Facebook, but completely useless. Yeah, there you uh, go. I actually <laughs> have I I. Rob, I think this is a good one. Um, mm -hmm. I I was given a Clubhouse invite from folks who would not stop talking about how great it was uh, maybe a couple of months ago. And I uh, immediately, because I was I was accessing it on my iPhone, I was like, I mean, the audio was really bad, right? Because everyone's just kind of on their iPhones. Like, you know, we're, we're kind of used to pretty good audio and headphones and everything. I was like, huh. And it, if you're in a sort of lively conversation, conversations could be about anything, but... There were sort of a lot of, I don't know, industry people and celebrities that were getting people like me to be like, okay, I'll join the group, you know, or the room as they call it and see what's going on. And it's a bit of a mess. You can kind of tell who's talking because their avatar lights up. But when all of us are talking at the same time, there's a lot of lighting and you actually have to do the Patrick Norton hand raising thing if you have <laughs> have joined the room, but you haven't actually been granted access to join the conversation and, you know, be, have your, have yourself unmuted. So it's going somewhere, but it seems like it's a bit of a mess to me at this point. It, it absolutely is a mess right now. And there's all type of uh, issues with just content moderation and people getting bullied and that kind of stuff on there. And that's one of the reasons why I think you're going to see a lot of, a lot of other developers jump in and try to create something similar like this, because this company got, you know, a huge injection of cash from, who was it? Uh, you know, Andreessen Horitz, um, you know, I think the venture capital firm, and it's got a valuation of over a hundred million dollars and they've got literally a handful, a couple handfuls handful of, of employees at this point. So I think that you're going to see a lot of other developers try to recreate this and do it better and then also make it cross-platform, make it uh, you know available to most of the world on Android because it's just an iPhone app at this point. I like this tandem, like tandem jumping, tandem picking here. This is good. All right, what are you going to finish this up with? Okay, my last one is uh, mobile payments finally have become mainstream um, mm -hmm. next year. And I will just say this, this is probably as much of a hope as anything else. But uh, I do see uh, room for uh, mobile payments, and I'm not necessarily talking about your Apple Pay and your your, your uh, you know your NFC type stuff. I'm thinking more of like the Starbucks app, mm -hmm. um, to where you know you kind of uh, order uh, and you know order and pay before you go pick it up. Or I think that uh, that actual uh, PayPal is going to make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. um, I used PayPal. I think I was in uh, it was either CVS or Walgreens. I can't remember which one. And I was actually able to pay with uh, PayPal, uh, you know, with uh, just scanning a QR code. And I, I don't want to say that I'm a germaphobe, but we are in a pandemic right now. And mm -hmm. I don't like touching things. I don't want to touch the screen, to, you know, to enter in a pin or even to hit the enter button to not have to enter in a pin. I don't want to have to physically touch it. And like the Starbucks app, you don't have to touch anything. PayPal, if you can pay with it in the store, you don't have to touch anything. So I think you're going to see, uh, you know, other apps like that come, mm -hmm. you know, come about. Um, or, or just add maybe additional features to what they already have. And then when I say mainstream, I don't think that, you know, the majority of people are going to use it. I just mean mainstream in the sense that it will be normal. People aren't going to look at you sideways mm -hmm. when you're trying to use your phone to pay for something um, like they, you know, like they do today. I think that, you know, we're going to finally get to that point to where it's just a normal way of doing a transaction. You mean in the I U.S. Mean, too, because it's kind of the U.S. Out there oh, yes, it's definitely yeah. that. Like, in yeah, I feel like you're describing the WeChat that the U.S. <laughs> will finally figure out how to use. Yeah, or Europe, or Australia, <laughs> or yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. Used, I used my. I used my watch yesterday to, to pay for some groceries, and I, I felt I felt powerful. It's pretty great. I, I did that too. Yeah, at the yeah, 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 yeah. 
uh, I think I think this is your your low hanging fruit one. I, th I think this is rock solid. You're, this is definitely going to be a like, yeah, you, you have Visa, Mastercard. You're going to be looked at funny if you want to write a check more than you will be if you want to do a mobile payment. Exactly. I wish I would have said that myself, but you, you're absolutely right because it's like I just I think that the weirdness is going to go away from you trying to flip your arm over to pay or oh yeah, let, yeah. let me pull my phone out and uh, pay with that. I think it's going to be just a normal thing by the end of the year. All right, That's Lamar. I like it. Prediction yes, number sir. one so, from you. So any anyone who's uh, in the theaters, I, I expect you to hate me for this one, and that's fine. Uh, but I, I do expect uh, all movies to go same day theater and streaming for all major distributors by the end of 21. So not just Warner. You know? Everybody. Mm, I, everybody. This is bold. Everybody. This, this is, is bold. bold. Yeah, I, I agree know. with that. Well, you know, just. We, we 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 saw what Warner did. Very ambitious. They did you know seventeen movies next year. We got Wonder Woman, end of this year. Um, and, and and look, this was always, in my opinion, the plan. You know, the virus to me just accelerated everything by two or three years. I I think this was the, 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 the this was the twenty, you know twenty twenty three, you know twenty four maybe uh plan mm -hmm. of, of action anyway we saw the we saw the window shortening from 90 days and I think it recently got down to 71 you know now you have universal with their 17 uh day window mm -hmm. it, it it's 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 definitely shrinking you know and here's the thing people have have had 9 months to get used to content in their home pr premium content in in their home th this way uh you know whether you consider Scoob or Trolls Premium is up to you, but you know, you know, the, there, there's been there's been Wonder that Woman 1984. Been, that's pretty premium, yeah. That, that, that's very premium. There's no, there's, there's no joke. The reviews are actually pretty, pretty good. It came out today. Uh, I, I think you mean it came out right, a couple of weeks ago because today is December 31st, yes, of course. Yes, yeah. exactly. It was, it was <laughs> great, by the way. I love <laughs> wonderful <laughs> program. Oh, she's yeah, so just, good. Just, she's so she's, powerful. She's so, she's so wonder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I think this is the right way to move forward. I, now, listen, it, it's up to the studios to decide about profit sharing. I don't think that's my business or job. I, I mean, like, as a consumer, like, that's their job, you know, if they want to say, you know, like what Universal did, hey, we'll share profits off the VODs with, mm -hmm. with, with you, with AMC, the theaters, right. or, or with you, you know, and, you know, if they want to do something like that to, to, to help out, the, you know, they, I don't, I'm not calling for the death of theaters. I'm just saying what the inevitable is. You get, you have now, by the end of 20, by 2021, or literally by the end of this year, but going into 2021, thanks to Warner, have gotten people used to to this system, and you, and you cannot go back from it. Once that Pandora's box is open, it's open. And, I think and, this is a long shot because very, Disney didn't yeah. announce it at their investor day, but, but I but think they you got could close. You could they be right if yeah. if the early results of HBO Max look positive. If 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 Warner starts to go like this is really working, then you might see the others crumble. Like you've got a shot. You got a shot of getting this one right. Yeah. yeah. I, I I think I think Disney got as close as they were comfortable getting without really upsetting. I mean they, they put a lot of stuff on Disney Plus. There's a there's a lot of premium things that you know could have rightfully oh, yeah. have been theatrical. And and so you know so here's the thing. I, I people want to go to theaters can I'm not saying get rid of them. I'm not saying, you know, a streaming only, you know, but I, I think I like options. Mm -hmm. Even if, if you got to pay for a premium, even if it's like, hey, and there's, a, you know, like Disney tried to do with Milan, which I don't think it was a good movie to do it with. But, you know, if there's a, a premium for day one access, sure. If it's a good enough movie, I, I think that's an option. That's a fair option. Yeah. It's because you're already paying that premium at the theater anyway. When I would take, you know, my kids and my wife, we, we'd walk out of, you know, an $80 bill or whatever oh, sure. just to go see a movie with three people and <laughs> I'll, I'll happily pay 49.99 for your new release that weekend streaming on a nice setup at home than i would to go to i'm totally with you on this i do think it's unlikely uh this year but i think we're on the road to that no matter what oh so I, mean, I i think if if warner looks good after the first few releases and and suddenly disney and universal and sony can point to that and go like Look, theaters, it wasn't as bad as you thought, or it worked out really well. We can't resist. I think that that's where Lamar can can win on this one. I think it's gonna so, be interesting because there's a lot of lawsuits have been threatened by various and sundry, you know, people that were whose movies were basically nobody. Yeah, nobody like legendary, that, right? Yeah. yeah. Like that's gonna be interesting to see how the lawsuits settle out from that. Cause like 
a lot of people think, oh, you know, HBO Max currently has, I think, 7 million pure subscribers. So they felt that they lost money. Mulan, I think the number was $35 million on that, that paid launch before they opened it up to all Disney Plus subscribers. And compared to $135 million on an opening day weekend, like I, I think if they can get, bring the numbers up, either movies are going to come a lot less expensive or they have to get the numbers way up. But I, Also, I they think have to get people on board. They can't just do what Warner did and tell them like two minutes before they announce it and get everybody upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, what's prediction number two, plans. Yeah, so prediction number two is kind of in the same same vein a little bit. It's, it's streaming services. So uh, hi Scott. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I, I I think Disney folds Hulu into Disney into Disney Plus app as a hub, and Ooh. combines the subscribers to over a hundred million. Now you know here here here's what I base this on. You know, in 2019 they did the deal with Universal. You know where they you know where they would get the rights to 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 own and manage Hulu, right? Uh, and that goes into 2024. You know, but what's not said is, you know, the, the price that they have to pay out in 2024 is really based on on the how the the value of mm -hmm. Hulu. And I, you know, I, I and I'm not saying Disney is going to do something underhanded here, but at the same time, why would they put so many resources into Hulu? If they, you know, to end up paying a, a premium to, to to these guys, and I, so I don't think they're going to kill it off, but. But, I don't know if they can do this without Comcast's approval, though. That's very, very possible. Yeah, we don't know the details of the, of the deal. Because so, yeah, I think they, you're absolutely right. And the only reason this doesn't happen in this coming year is if Comcast won't let it happen yet. Exactly. Yeah. I, it be I, nice I think to watch confusing. those two be... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, no, no, it's fine. I, I just think it's confusing marketing to, uh, to have some Marvel products on Hulu... Mm. Uh, some uh, Disney and listen, we, we talked about Netflix earlier, right? I think this is a good example. Netflix has Netflix. When you log in, it bugs me all the time. Netflix and then there's Netflix Kids. There's you 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 choose one to, to click. And I, I think if you know Disney kind of said, okay, I know that this is a family app, but there are adults here. I mean, that's why they have the Marvel stuff. That's why they, have, they kids aren't watching. That. That's, that's those are grown adults watching all that stuff. You know. Uh, if they had a hub like they have for National Geographic, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, I think that would I think that would not only just be good for the app, but then it gets their eighty million with Hulu's what thirty million, That's, uh, you know, and and now you have a what uh, Scott was saying earlier. Now you have a powerhouse going after Netflix, and they're know, already but, laying the groundwork for this because they're doing it with Star overseas. It's just a, yes. it's like you said, it's just a hub, and they're moving ESPN content into Hulu some more, so they're trying to blur those lines. Uh, yeah. You're definitely onto something here. Yeah, that's that's what the, the pieces are coming together here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, last prediction. What do you got? Yeah, yeah, this one's actually really quick, even though it's really controversial. <laughs> uh, Scott, don't hate me. Uh, I think games, <laughs> game streaming. Uh, and I don't mean streaming like, hey, I'm streaming on Twitch right now. I mean, I meant the cloud streaming, Stadia, like Stadia. Mm -hmm. Luna, who you know, who I, I tested out today. It's gonna, it's ambitious, but mainstream might be pushing it. But I think it's gonna be part of the conversation much more by the end of 2021. You know, Stadia has a bunch of games now. I think, but I think they have up to almost 100, 100 if you do get the pro subscription. So you, you know, you you're kind of on par with the Xbox. Game Pass, not in the sense of the premium things, but just a sense of sheer. Like when Stadia came out, they had no game. They had what, two games, two or three games. You know, now they have a kind of ro more robust catalog. And I think Amazon coming out with Luna is going to at least get people to think, okay, if I have a I'm, decent internet connection, my internet's getting better. You know, the five G thing is cool. You know, maybe I can give this thing a a, a go. So. Uh, and then, you know, Xbox has their X Cloud as, as well, which is incredible. So it's ambitious, but I don't think it's going to take over anything. But I think it's going to be part of the conversation. I don't think it's going to die. Uh, well, I definitely don't think it's going to die. And I think it's going to do, it will become the most mainstream it has been, certainly. And Microsoft, <laughs> well, getting, into the, get it worse. Microsoft getting into the game with an already established base of ultimate users who are already going to be set to do this immediately with a huge catalog of games, including premium AAA stuff that Microsoft puts out and their acquisition of Bethesda and all the other stuff going on this year with Microsoft, they are the ones poised to push that streaming stuff right up in front of everyday people. So And nobody can buy a 4K gaming card right now. Right, right, right? I mean, yeah. that there's it's a there's a there's a whole bunch of reasons why this could coalesce. And 
the more pressure it puts on ISPs and service providers to improve services, to offer better services, to drop caps, like wherever we can do to get that moving more, the better for that. So I'm, I'm actually looking to this to be a bit of a game changer if it takes off the way it should. I think you're totally right, whether it's fully mainstream and that's all we care about and we never buy another physical thing or download a game again, probably not this year, but we're definitely getting a lot closer to that day where it's indistinguishable from how we used to do it. We just turn on yeah. something instead of I, plug it in. I, I, I mean, real quick, look, look at what uh, Cyberpunk is actually making Stadia look good. Yeah. It's actually working really well on Stadia. That, 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 that's, that should be a headline itself. They should go with that for the marketing. Yeah. So, all right. I'm done. Good, good call. <laughs> All right. Those are good ones. Those are good ones. Uh, I'll finish this off. My first prediction is that uh, AI based defense systems like Microsoft's Defender have been the the sort of the bulwark. Like if something can get past the definitions, you got these AI based systems that, that can still catch stuff. I think we're going to have the first big attack by self learning malware this year and it won't be the first attack there's already been some tries at this but this we're gonna have the first big successful <laughs> ai based malware i said i gotta go vomit and i'll be right back i think you're totally yeah, right but like i gotta go to, vomit, to your vomit. Oh. on a high note tom yeah, yeah that's gonna be right, exciting tom. right <laughs> you just said that they're going to build skynet tom is that what i heard you say yeah. <laughs> that's what he just said yeah it you can't like there's that. no ai in skynet no. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's accurate. Yeah. And uh, well, and 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 to maybe give us a, light, a chink of light of hope here, uh, we we are going to see more of the machine learning based uh, defender type systems. They're going to get better. This is going to push them to get better and better. Uh, but the arms race will be on. I think you're right about all of that, and it will be <laughs> it'll be freaky at first, but it'll be like anything else. We'll. Uh, Systems will have to rise to the task, and that's the part they don't put in the movies. Um, so I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I sound like you a little bit here. Actually, mm. I think that there, that will be, it'll be good for the cybersecurity world. It'll make us have more the, secure. Yeah, yeah they have stuff. Yeah. Ga the game will be upped, and we'll have to respond. It's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, uh, I just realized none of my predictions are very positive. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, this, this next one, may you may or may not consider it. Uh, I, I think uh, by the end of the year, Walmart, Amazon, and Alphabet uh, will all be offering some kind of health care to people. I don't mean just like selling pharmaceuticals. Amazon's already doing that. I mean, I mean health care. Like, now I get to go dry heave. <laughs> yeah, some kind of like maybe it's health insurance. Maybe it's clinics. Uh, maybe it's like telemedicine. Uh, telemedicine you, seems like a pretty good one. You, you know, as somebody prime, who's prime who's prime. a uh, as somebody who's a, 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 a I am a freelance worker, you know, and I pay for my own health insurance, and you know, I try to pay for what I can afford, but it's never like really the best. But that's just what I got to do. I look forward to having more options. I'm not saying that Amazon or Alphabet or Walmart or any other. Um, company that's kind of in this uh, in in this bucket is going to give me anything better than what Kaiser is giving me now, but more options not I necessarily guess. a bad thing. <laughs> what? I'm just thinking there there's a Walmart around the corner from my house with an urgent care like right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like is that is that urgent care going to next year? Is it going to be is Walmart <laughs> urgent care? <laughs> right, right, right next to the McDonald's that's inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there you go. And uh, so we'll all be healthier. That's positive. Um, I, yeah. I do think like remote, this is based on the idea of like telemedicine and remote care and stuff is becoming more acceptable, obviously. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I think that there'll be some movement along that lines. Uh, I, and then I the low hanging fruit. This one. Yeah. yeah. The low hanging fruit. Uh, and uh, this is where I reveal like I might have to re record this one <laughs> if, depending on what happens between now and the, the actual 31st. Uh, antitrust suits will be lodged against Amazon and Apple by the United States. Man, mm. it feels like that could happen before next. I mean, before yeah, it could happen Amazon. like today. Yeah, yeah that could that could be it. happening now, and I just need to check my feeds. <laughs> I was like, Tom, you nailed it. Yeah. Gonna, also, it'll <laughs> rain once in 2021. <laughs> He's gonna Not make Patrick go barf again. All this barf. No, no. No, this one. This one's. This one you're good one. with. All right. 
Yeah. You right. found the uh, Pepto Bismol of predictions. Well done. <laughs> it's just uh, just a little a moot. A little amuse bouche here. Uh, here's some buzzwords to keep an eye out. These buzzwords already exist. Uh, so this isn't a prediction. This is keep oh, an God. eye out for I... these buzzwords in 2021. Internet of behaviors. Okay. Anywhere. Oh, anywhere ops. Security mesh. And hyper automation. Internet of behaviors makes me want to dry heave like Patrick. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I don't, <laughs> that's... <laughs> Well, but like I, internet <laughs> behaviors to me is is what does that mean? When, well, when I, for example, some of my smart popularity. home stuff already feels like an internet of behavior because my, you know, Amazon assistant uh, periodically asks me, "Hey, you've been doing this this certain way a, a certain amount of times at a certain time of day. Do you want to keep doing that?" And sometimes I'm like, "Yeah, thank you." That feels like an internet of behavior to me. Yeah, it's an extension of the Internet of Things. Uh, yeah. And and ask five people what it is, you'll get, probably get five different answers right now. But it's essentially the data that you collect from the Internet of Things and the behaviors that you can make happen around that. I like Security it. Mesh, that one to me mm -hmm. is something that's, uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see how this works and how it plays out. It's, uh, it's interesting technology and just the, it's almost a thought experiment of, you know, putting security around the person as compared to around mm -hmm. the actual files. Right. Interesting Which, way to look yeah. at it. And then that might be the antidote to the AI based uh, attacks because you make it more complicated <laughs> when you have it closer yeah, to the person. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a good one. All right. Well, thank you all for, for joining us uh, and putting your predictions on the line. I can't wait to reconvene in a year's time and find out how we did. Uh, Tell folks where they can find more of what you do in the new year, starting with you, Scott Johnson. All right. Well, I've got all sorts of stuff going on, but all of it will point to frogpants.com. If you want to listen to shows, find my art, uh, check out my comics and projects coming up in the new year, that's the place to go. So frogpants.com and follow me on Twitter. I'm at Scott Johnson. And thanks for having me, Tom. You bet. Patrick Norton, what about you? I'm still doing AVXL, uh, weekly home theater and audio podcast with Robert Heron. You can catch it at AVXL.com. And for anything new that's coming up, just head over to Twitter. Uh, I am at Patrick Norton. Excellent. Rob Dunwood, where can find fo fine folks find more of your fine self? You guys can get to me at the SM or actually SMRpodcast.com. That's where I do uh, my podcast with a couple of my buddies. And uh, I can't actually announce it now. Um, but I do have a new podcast coming out um, mm -hmm. early next year. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I guess I did just announce it. I just didn't. You tell did. You you did. Happy New Year. Year. There's a new podcast <laughs> coming from Rob Dudley. Got a new podcast. going to be good. I'm, I'm leaking it, too. So. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Excellent. Keep an eye out for that, folks. Lamar Wilson, what about you? Yeah, uh, I'm doing a lot of major different things next year. So I actually go to LamarWilson.com. That's kind of like my, my link tree of all the different cool things that I'm going to be part of is, uh, you know, L-A-M-A-R-R -R Wilson uh, dot com. And, you know, of course, follow me on Twitter, too, because you, you'll get those cool things there, too. Excellent. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for helping support the show. We could not have done it without you. Uh, we've got the Patreon loyalty rewards uh, in full gear. You can get a sticker, a mug, a T-shirt, or a hoodie, depending on what level you support us on. That's got art with the DTNS seven-year anniversary logo. We're about to turn seven. Uh, we've got versions with uh, just the logo, and then another three months after that, you get one with Roger, and after that, one with Sarah, and then one with myself. You can get all the details at patreon.com slash DTNS. Uh, and just, man, it, uh, it it befuddles me how uh, we are still here seven years later, and that is entirely thanks to you all. So thank you, thank you, thank you once again, especially in 2020, for making another year of Daily Tech News show possible. We, we couldn't do it without you. <laughs> We've had a special week this week, but we are live regularly Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And that is it for DTNS 2020. We're off tomorrow for New Year's Day because we're all going to be, I don't know, hungover or something. But we'll be back on Monday in the new year <laughs> with Tim Stevens. It's a tradition. The Tim Stevens kick it off the year. It Happy really New Year, is. everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club. Oh.
hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>